You are now watching Mr. Gentleman Lifestyle Podcast TV. Choo! Yes, hello everybody. This is your boy Ken, aka Mr. Gentleman, your host of Mr. Gentleman Lifestyle Podcast, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Gentleman Lifestyle Podcast TV. Hope all is well. And at this time, we got a special guest. She is the podcast host of Kingdom Chat. She have a power called Rev Twelve Six. We got Miss Treffler in the building, so we're gonna to talk to her about her, her podcast show, her IG content, and many more. This was a really dope interview, and I know that y'all going to enjoy it. So y'all already know what to do. Sit back, relax, and I'll be right back. Yes, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. And at the time, I got my pushy guest. She is a podcast host. She got a podcast show called Kingdom Chat. Also, she got a power call. We have 12 six. And also, most important, she is a woman of God. We got Trevor in the building. Trevor, how you built? How you doing? What's up? What's up, guys? Can you see me? Yeah, you're good. You are good. You are good. Thank yeah, you so much for having me. Yeah, yeah. No, what, thank you for coming on the show. This this has been this has been a long time coming. I've been wanting to have you on the show for a minute, and so I'm happy that we finally have you on the show. And yeah, so that, that we're gonna get to it. So we're gonna start off with where are you from? I'm originally from Staten Island, New York, and I currently I'm in Connecticut. Don't ask me how I got here, but I've been here for <laughs> about <laughs> about 15 years. So can I still oh, wow. say I'm from New York? Is that like okay to do? I mean, you you were born in New York, but but I guess uh, Connecticut is what a part of you now. So yeah, it's too count, too count, too count. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so raised, born and raised in Staten Island, New York. Went to college in Connecticut. Met my husband there, and we moved back and forth for a little bit between New York and Connecticut. But ultimately, Connecticut was cheaper, so that's mm. what was a keeper. <laughs> I think that, that's probably the best decision because the way New York is right now. Yeah, I think you made the I think you made the right the right decision. Right. It's <laughs> so, so crazy. Like when you think about how God foresees things, when we the first time I moved out of New York, I didn't think I could live anywhere else. I was like, I everything I could do to get back there because I thought that that was where I belonged, that was home to me. And looking back in hindsight, the best thing that could have I could have ever done was to leave New York. And not saying you know, anything bad about New York. I still love my hometown, but what I've learned, the the things that I've seen in this world, I would have been so much more limited had I stayed in that that place where I was from and didn't branch out. Yeah, definitely. And like I said, you made the best decision because the way New York is right now, yeah, I, I, I'd, rather, I'd, I'd rather leave myself. <laughs> I go a lot. <laughs> but let's talk about your beginning of life. Like, you know, how were you growing up? You know, your childhood and every your background and stuff like that. So I'm one of six. So there's I have three brothers and two sisters. And I was raised, everyone in my family is very spiritual. Mm. So when I was raised growing up, it was from sundown Friday to sundown Saturday, like we had Shabbat, like we were learning about God at a very young age, like all of his attributes, like Jehovah Jireh, like all of that is what I was taught growing up. And I think it was a great foundation for where I am now. When I was going through it, it sucked because when everybody else was able to go out with their friends on Friday nights or everybody else was able to go out to parties or just to hang out and chill. Like that was not happening in my house. Mm. It was kind of like we were each other's friends and family. Like that was, it was our own little bubble. All eight of us, like we did our thing together and it's a great foundation. Like I said, it sucked at the time, but again, in hindsight, you realize like, wow, I needed that. Yeah, and I know I could definitely agree. You know, growing up with my parents and my me, and my three sisters, you grow up in a you know in a Christian home. You know, we go to church every Sunday and stuff like that. Plus, my grandfather was a pastor, and my grandmother was the first lady. And after he passed away, and then my aunt took over. So we've always been involved in the church. Of course, later in life, I kind of went a different direction. But then, of course, I eventually came back. Of course, but you know, but um. I could definitely relate. I could definitely relate to you, you know, growing up in a church, um, 
to her family and stuff like that. I think and it's how, like, everything you've been process. through. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, was just say, I think it's part of the process, like how you just said you kind of rebelled. You had that that space and time where it was like, I know this is probably what I should be doing, but you kind of have something in there you that's pulling you to try it a different way. And yeah. I think it's a necessary part of the process because yeah. like I will say for me, I believed always, like I've always yeah. been a believer. However, there's a difference between believing and knowing. And I think what I was raised up on was believing in something that my parents knew and what they were showing me and my aunts, my uncles, even like you said, my grandfather was a pastor too. So like you have a bunch of people telling you this thing that you should believe, but there comes a point in time in your journey where it has to become really real for you. And it has to be something that's more than just a belief, but like unknowing, like no one, people come under my Instagram sometimes and they'll be like, God's not real. And I'm like, cool, that's cool. Like you could believe that I'm not here to like challenge anybody. My God doesn't need me to defend him because he is, you know, and I know that he is. So there's nothing for me to try to like prove that he is like, it's a, it's not, it's, it's deeper than a belief at this point. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And that's dope that, you know, you're doing that too. And um, everything that you've been through, you know, from growing up until now, how that made you the person that you are today? Just even like how we just said, like that foundation, I think it's something that it's something you can always go back to, right? So when you're building your life and you want to build it on a solid foundation, I will say that everything that I have been through it all started from a solid foundation. So even when I fall, even when things happen that don't go the way I think they should, even when I'm like thrown off by life's like, you know, they be throwing darts and stuff. Like you be trying to dodge them and miss them, but it's necessary. And as long as you have a strong foundation to come back to, to say like, okay, what, what do, what do I know? <laughs> There's so much in this world that is uncertain, that's unstable. But if you can always come back to, what do I know? I know that God loves me. I know that he's there for me. I know that he's never leaving me. He's never forsaking me. Like there's just certain truths. So like what I've been through in life, it's taught me to trust through pain because I've experienced pain. I've experienced loss. I've experienced disappointment. Like I've experienced a lot of things. Um, anyone who knows me knows like I lost my father a few years back and that was one of the things that like kind of shook me to my core because that was unimaginable and there's just different things that I've been through in life um as far as disappointments and pains but what they've taught me and how they've made me who I am now is they made me stronger they made me more resilient they made me to have a stronger connection with God um when my father passed in 2015, I remember thinking, what do I do now? Because up until then, I always knew like, if anything happens, I can look to my mother, I can look to my father, they will be the ones to pray me through. They will be like, you know how you say you like, you have the praying grandparents. Like I had the praying parents that I knew that their prayers will always get through. And so I never cultivated within myself the ability to stand on my own spiritually because I knew I had them and when my father passed I remember saying like wow if I lose my mom who's gonna pray for me who's gonna pray for my kids like who you know so in that moment I learned I learned how to pray I learned how to read the word like I learned out of something that was really a painful situation but it grew me to be able to stand on my own so now when my kids I have a seven-year-old and a 13-year-old And like, my son won't go to sleep at night until he's like, can you pray for me? The fact that he asks for that, that he wants that. If he's he's hurt, if his head is hurting, he's like, can you pray for me? Like that to me, I look at that in awe because that's a go-to for him. And that's not a go-to for every, that's not even a go-to for every adult, let alone a child. So like, I, I think it's amazing that out of something that was very painful, I, I gained a new skill, I gained a new connection, I, I got deeper in my faith, and I was now I'm able to be that for my children. Yeah, that's amazing. And, I, and uh, once again, I apologize about, you know, sorry for your loss of your father. And mm-hmm. yeah, and you, you 
you're doing an amazing job. You're doing an amazing job. So you know. Thank you. And also, y'all gotta check out. They gotta check out your IG because your IG is like wow. It's uh, like it's amazing. Your content is amazing. I didn't want to say that. I didn't want to say that. Throw that in real quick. <laughs> Just throw that in. I appreciate that. Yeah, definitely check it out. X O underscore Tef on Instagram. It's so crazy how that even came about. Because first of all, can we just throw it back to when Instagram first started? I oh, didn't yeah, even realize right. <laughs> what Instagram was for the longest. I would just, I thought it was a photo editing app mm-hmm. where you can like edit the filter on your pictures. So I remember like putting pictures like through to just edit them and then getting alerts like someone liked your picture. And I'm like, how the heck can they do this? <laughs> like that's how long I've been on Instagram? And I remember in 2018, I went to a Woman Evolve conference. If any of you guys listen to Sarah Jakes Roberts, and I left that conference with so much like empowerment to just do um just do what I felt in my heart that I wanted to do. Like I always knew that I wanted to help people. Um up until then so let's rewind back a little bit i bought my house after my dad passed away and in the moment where i thought i was gonna feel like the happiest i felt the saddest so i was like i just bought a house i have a nice car i'm married i have two kids like literally we have a white picket fence like whatever you kind of envision of like the American dream of what is supposed to bring you joy and what's supposed to bring you happiness. I had that. And the day that we signed and closed on our house, I remember like being so sad. And in that moment, I was just like, okay, what's going on? Because you should be happy. And I remember thinking, if I'm not happy with all of this, like, what am I missing? And I think a lot of people get to a point in their life where all the things that they thought would make them happy, when you get to them, it doesn't seem, you don't seem filled. And there's something that's missing. And so when you talk about the content I do on Instagram or my podcast that I have, everything that I do is to bring people closer and more into alignment with who they really and truly are so that you can feel fulfilled in the moments that great things are happening for you. Because a lot of us have good things in our lives, but we're not experiencing them that way. We're experiencing them through the lens of depression or we're experiencing them through the lens of loneliness. You have people who are in really great positions to experience great things, but because they don't have a partner, they're not married, they feel like, oh, well, I'll be happy when I get married. If you are not happy before you get married, you will not be happy when you get married. Definitely true, yeah. These, things, these outside things are not what's going to make you feel alive. It's not going to make you feel like you're purposeful. It's not going to make you feel fulfilled. And so when I started this on Instagram, it was just like, I want to share all the things that I've been learning. Because when I tell you, I went through a season of life where I was so tunnel vision. I was listening to different pastors. I'll shout out my pastor, Stephen Furtick. Um, I think I listened to probably three years worth of sermons from him in like two months at one point, because it was just constantly in my ear, constantly reading books, constantly listening to podcasts. I wanted to learn how do I get this thing called joy and peace that I know exists out there. Like I know it's possible for me. So what am I missing? And how can I learn from these different people? And the more I learned, like my mind was blown with all of this information that is out there about things like peace, about things like, you know, what you focus on expands. So the more I was focusing on what I didn't have, the more I saw that in my life show up, like the laws of attraction, all these things that I never knew existed. And as I was learning them, I wanted to share them with people, but nobody was really like trying to hear it in my, I would say like in my immediate friend circle, they weren't reading those books. They weren't listening to those messages. So it was like, all right, it's cool. We'll let you talk for a little bit, but like engaging conversations um, were limited. And one thing that I kept hearing over and over was I don't have time to 
So like I would send someone a book or send them a message like, oh, I'm so busy. I don't have time to read that. I don't have time to listen to that. And so what I wanted to do was to be able to take in all the information, take out the juicy parts, take out the parts that work and share them with people so that, okay, you may not be able to read a 200 page book, but you could listen to a one minute you know, message on Instagram, or you can listen to maybe a 20 minute podcast on it. So yeah. that was my inspiration is just like, how can I simplify this for people who don't necessarily have the time or they have not yet um, created a lifestyle that allows them to prioritize that um, and get them interested enough in it that they'll make the time. Cause that's what ends up happening. The more, you know, the more you want to know, the more yeah, you yeah. realize you were missing out or you're like, wait a second. So if I do this, it changes everything. And it, it literally does. So yeah, that's, I don't even, I kind of go off on a tangent, but. <laughs> it's good. That's good. It's good. And nah, and like I said, I, I really enjoy your own content. It really helped me do some times too. So I want to thank you for, you know, putting that content out and stuff like that. Both your IG and your podcast. We're we about to talk to King, we're about to talk about the Kingdom Chat in a few. So I'm going to say thank you for that. Thank you for doing that and stuff like that. I appreciate you tuning in and listening and, you know, taking the time. Yeah. So let's talk about, let's talk about the Kingdom Chat. Like, how did that come together? How the idea came together and stuff like that? Like, what made you want to start the podcast? So Kingdom Chats actually started out as a live on Instagram. Mm-hmm. that me and a friend of mine, um, it was at the start of the pandemic and God just kept telling me, you need to do something, you need to do something. Like people, especially at the beginning of the pandemic were very fearful. Um, a lot of people were losing faith and a lot of churches shut down. So yeah. people who would normally have a place to go to exercise their faith and to strengthen their faith, they no longer had that. And not everyone is goes goes to a church that does online. So some people literally went from I'm in church Sunday, Wednesday, you know, Saturday morning prayer to nothing. And so it was just placed on my heart that to do an Instagram live series. So what we would do is we would listen to our favorite preachers, uh, Stephen Furtick and Sarah Jess- Jakes Roberts on Sunday. And then we would would talk about what we learned and the parts that stood out on live that next, the next day. And people got really interested in that. Like I'll take, because we would take simple concepts and principles that were talked about in the message, but then we would apply them to our everyday life. Because if we're honest, that's where the, the disconnect is. We can hear something, read something in the Bible, hear someone preach, But if you can't apply it to your life and you can't apply it to the situation that you're in, then what is, what did it do? And so my goal with Kingdom Chats Live was to take the word and apply it and give them analogies and show them how it can work in your everyday life. And that's how it grew from Instagram Live to, you know, I don't necessarily want to be live all the time. Um, so, and my schedule didn't necessarily permit for me to be live again. Once like the world kind of opened back up and people went back to work, um, the schedule wasn't as free. And so we were able to transition that live into a podcast. Um, it started out with me and one of my close friends, Jamie, we're doing it together. Um, but even through that, like over the past year, we weren't able to both do it. But God told me like, you know what, keep it going yeah. because, and he, I love, okay. So anybody who's listening, who wants to do something, but doesn't know how just pray about it because oh, God is so strategic in how he puts things together because I am not a technical, like a tech person. And if I had to uh, set up my own podcast, I probably would never have, but he linked me with someone who would do the background work. Okay, let me research. How do we get you on Apple? How do we get you on Spotify? So my co-host did all of that part of the aspect. I'm the one who will be like, all right, well, I'll record, I'll edit, I'll, you know, do all of that type of stuff. And so 
once it was set up in place, even though she is no longer on the show with me, everything was in place. So now I don't have to do all that legwork. It was already done for me. And it was almost like it was strategically done. Like God was like, all right, I know that if I leave this to you, we'll be here forever waiting for you to do it. Let me get you some help. And then now you can keep it going and do the vision that I have put in your head from jump. And even with like, I'm currently writing a book and God gave me this book to write two years ago. Oh, wow. And I was just like, I don't know how, I'm not a writer. Like, I don't, I don't know how to organize a book and how to put things together. And over the past year, he strategically gave me like different things. And then I looked up one day and I was like, hmm, that looks like an outline to a book. And it was literally like, he gave it to me month by like month in sections. But when I had spread it all out, it's like, wow, you were giving me the blueprint all along and I didn't even know. Like, I didn't know over the last two years that that's what you were doing. I thought it was just me creating content for Instagram or me creating content for someone else or something else. But when I looked at it in its totality, it's like, wow, you really walked me through this in baby steps. And a lot of times we don't recognize his hand that way. But if you look at it, if you go back in your life and look at how he sometimes will strategically place you in places to get something out of it, and you don't know that you're going to need it down the line, but then you end up needing it. Like even with Instagram and YouTube, all of that stuff, I knew nothing about video editing. I knew nothing about podcast editing. I knew nothing about graphic design and all the stuff that you see me do on Instagram, podcast, anything, YouTube, that's all me doing it. Mm. The only reason why I started to learn about this is because my daughter said she wanted to start a YouTube channel. <laughs> and so I learned it for her. Six months into it, she no, she lost interest. She didn't want to do oh, it anymore. <laughs> oh, wow. And I thought, well, that was a waste of time, but it wasn't. <laughs> because yeah. everything I learned in order to help her, I'm able to now use in my own things. And again, God is strategic because he probably knew that if I had to just learn it for me, I wouldn't have done it. But yeah. when it comes to my children, I'm always going to go hard. I'm always going to like push myself a little bit further so that I don't disappoint them. So he uses, like he knows you, he knows what motivates you. He knows yeah. what will push you to the next level. And he will use all of that to get you to where you were created to be. Yeah. And you know, um, it's your know, podcast is an amazing podcast. I enjoy it. I listen to like every time you got to do an episode, I listen to it, I tune in, I support. And you know, thank you for the podcast, you know. And let my listeners know where can they listen to the podcast. So you can pretty much find the podcast anywhere that podcasts are streaming. Um, the number one place that people typically go to is either Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Um, but you can even if you go on my Instagram, there's a link. And it's on, you can listen to it straight from the internet if you wanted to, like if you don't have any of those apps, but it will, anywhere that they, it streams, you can pretty much find it. Okay, that way. And also, congratulations on the book. I didn't know you were making the book too, so congratulations on the book as well. Thank you. So it's a process. It is def I didn't realize how much of a process that writing a book was. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a process, but I'm, I'm grateful for it and I'm thankful for it and I'm learning to charge for things because most of what I do is giving away free content because mm -hmm. I genuinely want people to win and it's never been about what I'm going to get from it it's always just been about listen if I win and you win and the next like we can just pass this thing on that, yeah. we'll see such an effect on this earth if we can just all get into an alignment of who we really were purpose and created to be so that's always been my motivation but recently I was listening to someone and she said something and it kind of like triggered or sparked something in me to say, you know, maybe you do need to start charging and putting things out um, to be able to, to sell. And what she said was, imagine how much energy, resources, time you could pour into learning, growing, and helping other people if you wasn't combating trying to work at your job and trying to, you know, make money for in this other capacity. She's like, I charge now to sustain my life so that I can take my time 
and continue to help build other people up. And so she was like, if I have to go to work, you know, from nine to five, be a mom, do all these things, it's leaving me very little time and energy to pour into this aspect. And she was like, so if you only do enough to like stay afloat, like, oh, well, just a little bit extra or I'll do it as a hobby or I'll do it on my downtime. Like right now with my podcast, it's a monthly podcast now. Like I started out trying to do it weekly, but I had to do it monthly only because of time restraints. Yeah. Now, like imagine that. I didn't have to go to work and I can literally focus on my podcast. Imagine how much, how many more people I could reach, how many more souls I can help, how many more purposes I can help get into, you know, fulfillment. So it's just kind of like a tool to me to be able to say, if I'm able to, to reach more people and help more people, that's a gift to be able to do that. And I don't want to keep brushing it under the rug as if it's a hobby when it's a calling. And I think a lot of times we, we do that. We treat the thing that we were called to do like a hobby and we try to do it in our spare time instead of creating a life in which what we were called to do is what we do. And then everything else becomes extra. Yeah. And like I said, you did an amazing job with both um, the pocket and then I look forward to the book. Is the book out yet or not yet? No, the book is not out yet. So my goal is for it to drop May 1st. And so I will, you'll see me on Instagram. I'll, I'll start sharing it more with people, but that is the goals for it to drop on May 1st. And it's called Stepping Into Purpose. Okay, dope. Right, right, on, right on my birthday month. So that's dope. <laughs> that is dope. That is dope. So also you are a co-founder of the Apparo Rev 12.6. So tell us about that and how you got part of that. So Rev 12.6 is a uh, faith-based apparel. And basically what the goal is, is to have shirts. We have shirts, hats, hoodies, everything that is just a reminder to you and to others of your faith. And so like, for example, one of our hoodies is the Jeremiah 29 11 hoodie. And for those who may not know, that is a scripture. Um, and, and it's one of my favorite scriptures because it just reminds me that before we were in our mother's womb, that God had a purpose for us. He had a plan for us. And the plan was to give us a hope and a future and to prosper us. And so sometimes when we're going through life, we forget those things. We forget the promises that he made to us. We forget the things that he said about us. And so the apparel line is just to be a reminder, a walking testament to what he has spoken over our lives. And in those moments when we may need a reminder, it's like, listen, it's like a walking billboard. He has a plan for me. He's prospering me. Um, so that's what the idea behind it is. How can I be a walking testimony of my faith? Okay, that's dope. And where can I get the apparel? What, what the, like the website? You can find that online at Rev126, and it's spelled R-E-V, the number 12, and S-I-X.com. And we have a, a crazy sale going on right now. So definitely um, check that out. Everything is on sale from hoodies, sweatshirts, t-shirts, hats, um, all types of stuff. Okay, there you go, there you go. So as you know, we are in a, well, I don't, I don't know if we're still in a pandemic, but we, it's complicated these days. But um, what the, when the pandemic affect you as a whole, and what did the pandemic um, taught you? So for me, the pandemic taught me to stand on what I know and not to be swayed. And I say that um, both being empathetic to people who lost people in the pandemic, but also standing firm in my faith that like, for example, for me, I will say, I try to walk in absence of fear. And so throughout the pandemic, it's hard to not walk in fear when everybody around you wants to suck you into that. And to kind of be able to put your blinders on, the word says we walk by faith and not by sight. And so it taught me to step into that and to fully like embody that because I had to not look at everything that was around me and recognize that what he spoke to me about me was you are safe, you are whole, 
you are healthy, your children are safe, your children are healthy. And so to not allow that fear to trigger anything inside of me, um, it also taught me how to find blessings in the midst of chaos because chaos there was, but even in all of the chaos and all of the, the negativity and all the bad things, there were so many amazing things that took place during these last two years. And I think that people almost made it taboo to be happy. And they made it kind of like, how dare you be exceeding or excelling or happy during a time when so many people are losing and so many people are going through these things. You almost didn't want to be happy or be you know, openly happy during that time. And so it, it taught me how to um, stand firm in my who I am and what I am, but it also taught me um, different levels of friendship. Um, some people through the pandemic, it, it brought us further away and I had some friendships that it brought me closer. But one thing that I learned is that my destiny, my purpose, none of that is tied to a single individual. People who I thought would be there for me, people who I thought would be down with me to the end, this pandemic showed that that's not always going to be the case. Yeah. And I had to learn, there's this, there's this sermon I always go back to, it's called Shipwreck. And it's talking about when the Apostle Paul is on his way to Rome and he gets shipwrecked. And an angel comes to him and he says, don't be afraid, have courage. The boat is going to break, but you will not die. And, I'm, and nobody on this ship is going to die, but the boat will break. And when I think about that, there are some things in our lives that are going to break. And there are going to be some things in your life that you thought were going to carry you to the next destination. Like a ship is supposed to, to bring you somewhere. And so when you're looking at something like that, it's like, well, how are you going to get me to shore? How are you going to get me to this destination if the thing I thought was going to get me there is broken? And not only is I, I'm looking at it be broken, but God, you're telling me that I'm going to have to break this thing. And that's when you realize that the ship is never the thing that's carrying you. God is the thing that's carrying you. And so when I recognize that, that's something that I learned in this pandemic, that it's nothing outside of me. There's no person, there's no job, there's no nothing that is carrying me. That if it has to break, I won't continue to be carried. That's, that's one thing that I recognize. Um, I think it's important for people to recognize that there is a source that gives resources. And so all the things that we typically attach to our, to our jobs, you know, money in the bank, you know, positions of status, whatever it is, are all resources yeah. that are given. And the resource might break, the resource might end, but if I'm still connected to the source, then resources are unlimited. And so I have to get outside of the box. I had to get outside of the box to thinking this is the only way he can bless me and recognize that he can bless me any way that he chooses. If I lose the job, he'll bless me another way. If I lose the friendship, he'll bless me another way. And so that is what I learned through this pandemic for myself, even just through looking at others, other people connected to me, how he was able to bless them tremendously. People who lost their jobs, who thought that was going to be the end or be all, and then ended up landing their dream job, you know, as a result of that. And so in the moment, it's easy to kind of feel sad or lost or disappointed or frustrated because you don't know how he's going to do it, how he's going to get you there. How is this all going to work out? And we always want to know how, but the reality is bigger and, and greater than the how is the who. And so once I knew who the who was in this guy, yeah. then everything else kind of like fell into place. And so that's the, that's the biggest thing that the pandemic that I've learned through the pandemic is just who my, who my source is and through who all things flow. Yeah. And everything you just mentioned, I definitely did been through, been through it. The pandemic was really, really, really crazy, but I do have to thank God for everything that he done in, just protected me and my family and allowed me to go back to him because I got I got saved 
during the pandemic. We say during the pandemic, so it it was it was happy that I glad I glad I made that decision to to come back to home during that time and stuff like that, and do it now. So so yeah, so I I definitely could relate to that. So what is your dream? So what is your dream venture? Something that you always want to do. I would love to. And I, I'm not, to be honest, I'm probably thinking on a smaller level, but I really would love to do like a woman's retreat mm. across, like do like cross country, across the world, like as just getting like-minded women together and pouring into them, you know, getting people who deal with finances, who deal with mindsets, who deal with fitness goals, and just bring them all to one location with, you know, a group of women and just allow them to like experience luxury, but also just experience the knowledge, the revelations and the everything that these people would have to pour into them. Like, I would love to be able to do that. Um, it's weird. Like, I never considered speaking a gift. And the older I get and the more aligned I get, I find like that is what the gift that God has given me. So when you talk about what I would like a dream venture, like if I could just speak for a living, <laughs> I would do that. I would go around just speaking life into people because I'm so aware of the power that words have. I'm aware of the people who I tuned into who changed my life, who helped me to see something different because how you see something is everything. That's why two people can look at the same thing and come out with two different outcomes because perspective, how you see something is what matters the most. So like if I could just speak to people, teach people and help them grow and, you know, help them to realize like I relate to them so much, feeling stuck, feeling alone, feeling all of those things. I've been there, done that, bought the t-shirt and, you know, don't plan on going back there, but you need someone, you want someone who can relate to you, who can empathize with you and what you're going through. And that can help pull you out of what you're going through to show you there's more out there for you. There's better out there for you. There's greater for you. And so my dream venture would just be like going around, helping people like come to that realization. There you go. And, and that's a, that would be a dope idea. Um, but you already know, anything is possible, do it, do it. Anything is definitely possible, do it. And so what other projects that you got going on other than the stuff that you mentioned today? Yes, yeah, so I mean, I mean, right now that is where my focus is, the podcast, the clothing apparel and the book I want. So I've not done this before, but I'm also working on turning. So the workbook is something you can do on your own, right? So I can give you a workbook, you can follow along with it. But on top of that, I know that there are different types of learners. So there are people who you can just give them a book and they can just walk through it and do it. No coaching, no accountability needed. Like they will get it done. Um, but I also want to design a course specifically for people who need a little bit more help or who need accountability partners or who, who don't necessarily have a circle of friends or family to encourage them because environment is everything. You take a seed, and put it in the wrong environment, it will never grow. And there's nothing wrong with the seed, it's just not in the right environment. And so we are those seeds. We are seeds that if you put us in the right environment and you water us and you nurture us, that we will grow into everything that we have inside of us comes out, right? Now, everybody can't just up and change their environment physically. But through the power of the internet, through the power of virtual rooms and things like that, you can put yourself in environments with like-minded people that will help you grow, that it's almost impossible not to grow when you get into certain rooms. So that's the, one of the things I'm working on right now is just designing a program that will allow people to come together um, and be able to feed off each other and to create um, a platform where each person can help the next person grow and to help each other stay accountable for the things that we say that we want in life. And, um, and then I'm gonna be opening up, I'm not opening this up until the midsummer. So the end, probably like the end of June, I'll be opening up one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. Dope, that, 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 
That's amazing. That's amazing. That's dope. So what do you have to say for anybody that's going the same route as you? Like, you know, with your podcast, the book and everything. Like, what do you have to say to them? One thing that I think is really important that people know, right? So it's process. Everything's a process. And I think sometimes we want something and we see a goal in front of us. And we think that the route to it has to look the same. So this is what I shared so far is the route my life took. It's the route, the path that got it out for me. But the word tells us that the steps of a good man are ordered. So just always remembering that your steps are ordered, not just the steps that you like, not just the steps that look good, but this, all of your steps are ordered. So that means that when you stumble or things are not going the way you look, that you think that they should, that you don't judge it too too soon. Don't, don't label it as negative. Don't label it as, oh my gosh, I made a mistake. I'll, I'll never be like, no. Every part of your journey is ordered. And even when you step out of line, that's part of the journey too. Like how you said, you know what? I was out of alignment and through the pandemic, you recommitted yourself to him. Don't think for a minute that everything that you went through that led up to that moment of you surrendering to him wasn't already thought of. You're never so far out of alignment that he can't get you back on the path. It's almost like a, a GPS systems, like constantly rerouting, constantly rerouting. You get, you might have an obstacle. You might have something in your path that it says roadblock. And you're thinking like, wow, the road that the way I thought I was going to get there is blocked. When that happens, you don't pull over and just stay still. You, you look for the reroute. You look and say, okay, this door is closed. This opportunity didn't work out the way I thought it was. Then that means that this is not the direction he wanted me to go. He's rerouting me. And I think people, we all like to hear yes for everything, but no's are just as important as yeses. And yeah. they're constantly like, you might have doors closing your face. You might have um, opportunities and you're like, wow, I thought this was going to be the one. I thought this was going to be the thing that would get me there. I thought this, I think the greatest thing I can let somebody know is to release the expectation of how it's going to get done, but never release the expectation that it's going to get done. And that right there to me was a game changer because as long as I can keep the belief and the, the faith that it will happen and separate myself from how it's going to happen, it kept me focused. It kept me going and it kept the disappointments from seeping into my heart and causing bitterness or causing resentment because those things will happen too. You, yeah. you put in a lot of work, you put in a lot of energy. You know how many times I put in time, energy, effort into something that got like five likes? Like, yeah, I'd be like, y'all, y'all don't see this greatness? Like what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> but, and then there was times where I didn't think anything of, I was just like, whatever. And that would be the thing that blew up. I remember one time I woke <laughs> up and I had like a, a thousands of like um, comments and, wow. and likes. And I was like, and all these new followers, I'm like, what, the heck? what is going on? I didn't post anything that day. So I'm like, what's going on? And then like, I get all these text messages, like you're on the shade room. You made it to the shade room and you wasn't even oh, wow. being shady. And I'm like, <laughs> and like twice I made it to the shave room off a quote that I posted. And I was laughing to myself because you, you, you may not know this, but I'm not the best speller. I'm like, I'm not good with grammar when it comes to writing, which is AKA why I said that I'm really not a writer. I'm more of a speaker. You're not, and the, only I, You're not the only one. <laughs> But the thing that they posted of mine on the shade room had a spelling error. It had a typo. Oh, oh wow. And I was like, really, God, of all the things that you <laughs> want to show to millions of people, this is, this is the one you chose. And it was funny because I went to the comments and a lot of the, in the, the comment section were saying good things. And mm. then there were a lot of people who were like, she can't even spell. She can't even this. And even in those moments, like the enemy will always try to pull you to the negative in yeah. the midst of something positive. 
And so I just had to read it and laugh. I'm like, y'all right. Your girl can't spell. Like, I just can't. But did you get the message? Exactly. You exactly. know, did you get the understanding? I hope that you got more out of it than a, than a typo. Like, so you yeah. just have to refocus and reframe the things that happen to you in life. You'll always be able to find something negative. Um, but I say that to say that God can change something in an instant. There was nothing that led up to that day that told me that I was going to be on the shade room. There was nothing that led up to that day that told me that I was going to have tens of thousands of people come through my Instagram that day. Like there was, there was no connection, but that's how God can work. And I think that he, he strategically does things like that just to let you know how quickly and easily things can happen for you to stay ready, to stay prepared, to stay in your proper position so that when those things happen, you're ready. Yeah. And I, I just, you know, that's what I would say to somebody. It doesn't happen overnight because you're working, but it could happen just that fast. Exactly. The thing that you want, the thing that you're dreaming of, the thing that you're working towards, it, it really can just happen so quickly with God. Yeah, definitely. Um, good, good advice. Um, also, I'm shocked about the shaving with that. I didn't even know that even happened. <laughs> the shaving with yeah, that, that was right? a while. That was probably maybe a year a year or so ago that was in 2020 we're in 20 we're in 2022 so that happened in 2020 um and it's in it's funny because they didn't tag me so oh, wow. you'll see it because i i put i tag my um anything i put up has my name on it yeah, so yeah, yeah. my name was on it so you'll be able to go back and see if you if you went through this stuff they post so much but you'll be able to go back and see it but they didn't tag me in the like comment section mm-hmm. or like in their description. And it's like, even stuff like that, it's like, okay, God, I see you. It's like, yeah. cause I don't, I want, I want you to understand that it's not about you. Mm-hmm. Everything that we do, it's not about us. God gives us gifts. He gives us talents and our gifts are supposed to be for other people. Yeah, yeah. And I think sometimes what delays people from reaching their fullest potential is the fact that they're still trying to do it for themselves. Mm. I'm, they're still trying to, to gain worldly success just for the sake of saying I'm successful or just for the sake of saying I have money. Don't get me wrong. Money is not a bad thing to have. Like, I want money. I, you know, I'm, so I'm not saying anything against that. But always check your motives. Yeah. Because money comes and money goes. But that should never be the motivation behind what you're doing. Mm. If money is the only motivator for you, you'll never have enough. There'll That's never true. be a moment when you're like, okay, I'm at peace now because I have enough money. Mm. It never comes. And I'm speaking as a person who, you know, I have a really good job. And I've watched through the years as I progress through the financial ladder, there's like watching the people around me like give you an example. I remember one time I turned down making probably like $5,000 in a day. And I said, no, because my, my daughter had a soccer dream and it was important to me because it was important to her that I made her soccer game. And I remember people on my job, like, I can't believe you would turn that down. And it's like, yeah, because my family matters to me. And if my only motivator is money and I'm chasing money, I'm going to lose sight of all these other things that are really important. And my children are important. My husband, you know, the things that he does, like those, those matter. My health, my mental health and my physical health also matter to me. And so you have people I've literally in my field that I work in have watched people tax their bodies so badly because they want the money. And when you, so I try, and like I said, I know that money is a necessity. Like we need money to eat, to, you know, to pay for things, but it can never be my motivation because it's not my top priority. I have things that are more important to me. And I think that if you can find the thing that you're working towards that's outside of you, you'll be more motivated and you'll stick through it through those challenging times. Because if your motivation is only money, when the money slow up, you gonna slow up. Yeah, yeah. But if there's something bigger, you'll put in that time, you'll put in that energy. You know, I'm not, I don't get paid to podcast, but when I have people who DM me and say, you know what, this really changed something for me. 
I heard this thing that you said and it, it sparked something in me that I was able to do this, this, and this. Like you have no idea how many people are connected to your gift, who, who's connected to what you are bringing to the table. And a lot of times we devalue the thing that other people see in us and are like, wow, that's amazing. But for us, because it's our norm, because it's just us, we devalue it. And so we'll put it on the back burner or we won't really you know, let it be seen by other people because in our minds it's like, well, it's not that serious or it's not that important or it's not good enough. Whatever it is you think about the thing that God gave you, you have to re-envision it and kind of reevaluate it to realize you have more in your hand to work with than what you've been giving yourself credit for. And I, I think that, I know your original question was not that, but <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, what's in your hand? What, what is it that you have in your power, in your hand that God has given you that you can use? And I think if we kind of took a look across the board, a lot of us are not using everything that's in our toolbox. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, that was deep. And I know that wasn't the question, but that was deep. No, that was, I'm, glad, I'm glad you spread the, the knowledge out here. So yeah, that's, dope, that, that's deep. So before you go, we gonna play a segment game called Five Random Topics. We are actually five random topics and you let me know like, basically how you, how you feel, feel about it. So are you ready? Okay, I think I'm ready. I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the first the first question is, what is your favorite era, era of music? Um, I would say late '90s, early 2000s. Like I'm an '80s baby, but oh. that era of like P Diddy and the Fan, Maze, Little Kim, like to me, that was the best era. Like I can still probably tell you word for word every lyric from a DMX album the locks album like I loved it even the R&B from that that era it was just crazy like everything big everything just like yeah that's my that's my era right there I, I can't get with this new school I'm not uh, there you, 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 you are you are not the only one I definitely listen to old school from 90 2000 even far back to the 80s and 70s and Motown so I definitely could, I definitely could relate. And can as you, an 80 baby, yeah, I definitely can could relate. you just have a moment to realize that there was a point in time when Hot 97 played like old school at noon? Yes. It was like old school. And now when they play old school at noon, I'm like, this is my <laughs> era of music. Like what is happening? Am I old school now? So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's time change, time change. <laughs> All time favorite TV show. Oh, that's really hard. Um, I'm going to say The Office. I'm going to say The Office. Okay, go yeah, The Office is funny. I ain't going to lie. The Office is funny. I'm not going to lie. I'm, right. I doubt, I'm probably the worst person because I don't really watch that much TV, but like The Office is probably one show that I've watched from beginning to end multiple <laughs> times. So I'm going to give it to The Office. Okay, okay. No, off is a dope show. Off is a funny show. I don't have to lie. It's a funny show. All right, what is your favorite food? Uh, I'm a foodie. <laughs> a it depends on the day. Um, sometimes steak, sometimes mac and cheese, fried chicken. I I like food. That was a, I'm I'm the worst. I like food. Food is food is just good. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't I, I I don't blame you. I don't blame you on that either. I don't blame you on that either. I like food too. I, what movie what is one movie that made you cry that's made me cry I'm a whole punk y'all a whole bunch of movies made me cry but <laughs> <laughs> um, one movie I will say it's one of my favorite movies and it makes me cry every time I watch it but um, Good Will Hunting okay okay dope, you know, dope, anybody dope. I'm probably like the only one out here on the tree limb over but yeah the Good Will Hunting he he made me cry when he's like hugging Robin Williams and he's like, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. And I'm like, it wasn't his fault. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And last one. As you know, we got the verses coming up. And who you think, who, who is your favorite out of the two? BB, CC Wines and, or Mary Murray? I'm going to go with BB and CC Wines. I, I don't know if it's just because I grew up more listening to them, like hearing them. So that's probably just like a bias of mine, but I'm gonna go with them. Um, no, I, I, 
I, I agree. Same thing. Um, because I definitely did grew up with BB and CC. I remember my parents used to play them like every every day, waking up on mm-hmm. Sunday morning. I, was all I heard with them and Clock Sisters. So like, yeah, definitely I go for BB and CC as well. <laughs> I definitely go for them as well. <laughs> even though I, I, mean, I am a fan of Murray, Murray but BB and CC definitely got it. And plus, you know, the whole Vinyl family and all them. Mm-hmm. Who, who knows? Who knows they would bring out? So yeah, True. but. I didn't even think of that, but you're right. <laughs> yeah. But Trevor, thank you for coming on the show. It's been really fun. Uh, you're doing amazing thing with all your content from your IG, your your um, your podcast, your apparel, and then your book that got about to come out soon. I look forward to it. So we're singing. Thank you for coming on the show. You, you're one of my dream guests. So I'm happy that you finally made it happen. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank so you for having me. And thank you for, you know, not giving up on me because I know I said like several <laughs> times. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah let's do, it, let's do it and then i'm like okay so when you yeah when i saw your post on instagram i'm like you know what, let's just make this happen and i'm glad yeah. that we yeah happy that we made it happen as well and i know a lot of people are going to be inspired by your words so that's all that matters so once again thank you thank you for coming on you know before you go i need you to drop your social media everything that you're doing you're from the podcast the book everything drop this is your chance to drop it here this is your chance to drop everything so you can find me on Instagram, XO underscore Tef, T-E-P-H. You can find the clothing line at Vev126.com. And Kingdom Chats, the podcast, it's going to come up uh, as Kingdom Chats with Tef. And you can find that anywhere podcasts are streaming. Okay, there you go. And once again, thank you for coming on. And we'll be right back. Okay. I just want to take the time to thank everybody for watching Mr. Gentleman, Like the Pocket TV on YouTube. Thanks to my special guest, Ms. Trefilo, for coming on the show. Check out her podcast show, The Kingdom Chat, on all streaming platforms. Check out her apparel, Rev 12 6, right now. Support her. She's doing amazing things. So support her, y'all. And um, y'all already know, check out the YouTube version of Mr. Gentleman, Like the Pocket TV. On, you know, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Ken, a.k.a. Mr. Gentleman TV. And, you know, listen to all 25 episodes of Mr. Gentleman, like the Pocket TV. And, you know, only on YouTube. And also, y'all can listen to on the audio, Mr. Gentleman, like the podcast on Anchor, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Good Pods, and many more. Yeah, and y'all, and once again, thank y'all for tuning in to this latest episode of Mr. Gentleman. Like the Pocket TV. Have a good day or night wherever you're watching this episode. You are now watching Mr. Gentleman Lifestyle Podcast TV. Cheers!